Hi everyone, Cody here. So I've got two containers here full of mercury, as you can see. I got a piece of plastic tubing connecting them, which has been filled with mercury. This mercury filled tube is ran around in a coil here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect an electrical contact up between these two and see if we can make a magnet with this coil of mercury. So uh, using the mercury as a wire. So I got another little magnet here that we'll be able to use so we can tell if the uh, if it works at all. Uh, if it works, this magnet should jump. Okay, I'm going to connect it in three, two, one. So it was actually repulsed by the coil, so it actually flew out. Let's go ahead and stick that back in there. There we go, it gets sucked in. And the magnetic field produced is holding this magnet inside. I don't know if you can see that. But I can hold it up, and then when I disconnect it, that magnet falls out. Let's unhook these, so just like a wire inside of a tube. Let's see if we make any electricity. Okay, here it goes. Tip that back and forth, and certainly it makes the needle jump. We get quite a bit of power there. It looks like almost half a volt. Right, let's keep the magnet stationary inside. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flow the mercury past the magnet. So I'm going to make the so I'm going to pick this side up, and this mercury is going to be forced through, and it's going to start flowing. In fact, I'm going to be generating nearly half an atmosphere of pressure behind this mercury, so it'll be flowing pretty quick. If the uh, Mercury flowing generates any kind of current, and we'll pick it up here on this meter. Let's go ahead and pick this up. You see anything on the meter? Nothing. The mercury is definitely flowing. Tip this over, and you can see mercury dribbling out. Mercury is definitely flowing, and it's basically just a short circuit. There's nothing going on there. Let's go ahead and try it with a bit stronger magnet. So let's like set this up here. See, it definitely makes current when I move it past the magnet. But without that moving, if I'm just moving the mercury, it's, yeah, nothing significant. There's one more experiment I want to try here. See, I don't know if you guys know this, is that electricity flows through a wire is actually not that fast. I mean, you connect one end to a wire to a battery, the other end gets a charge almost immediately, about the speed of light. But it's basically like pushing on a large metal rod. The other end of the rod starts moving almost immediately, the, the speed of sound through the rod. But the rod doesn't have to be moving very fast. I think they've figured out that uh, electricity, the electrons actually jumping through the wire, only travel a, you know, about as fast as a snail, maybe a little faster than a snail crawls. What I want to know is if I get this mercury flowing faster than the electrons are moving, or if I could like make it move exactly as fast, then maybe I could make the electrons effectively be like running on a treadmill and stand still. And perhaps if I got electricity going through it, it'll stop the electricity. This is something I have no idea, so let's go ahead and find out. So, electrical contact, it pushes my magnet out. Okay, pulls it in. Okay, so it's holding the magnet in place. Now if I lift this up and start the mercury flowing, will it shut the magnet off? And it does not. Drop this down hang. here, let the mercury flow the opposite direction, nothing. The magnet is just being suspended. If I see if I adjust the speed to just a little bit of flow, let's raise it up really high, get almost half an atmosphere of pressure. And that magnet is doing nothing. So the uh, electrical current is able to flow regardless of how the mercury is flowing. All right, so new shirt, new day. I think we decided that the mercury flowing through the tube didn't make any difference. It just acted like a piece of wire. The electrons must be able to still jump through the metal. And perhaps it's the little jumps that actually cause the magnetic effect and not the actual flow. So even if they're kind of jumping and falling back, it's still making the magnet. Anyway, so uh, moving on, I'm going to go ahead and make a barometer. I got it set up right here. You can see this. I got me a plastic tube on the end of a one meter long board. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to fill this completely with mercury. 
think I'm gonna go ahead and use this tube here. And then once I get it full, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it into this, fix this to here, and then tip it over. And then hopefully the mercury falls down to the point where the pressure equalizes, leaving a perfect vacuum here and one atmosphere of pressure to push the mercury up to wherever it's gonna be pushed up. Sound good? Alright, we're almost filled up. I don't see any air bubbles. I think we're pretty good. Hopefully that big air bubble at the bottom doesn't cause any issues. Alright, we're gonna tip it up. No, 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 no. Why is it doing that? Alright, let's tip it up quickly. There we go. No, 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 no. This is surprisingly difficult. All right, it took quite a bit of flapping around, but I finally got the mercury barometer to work. I had to seal the top a little better, and I learned that the bottom needs to have a smaller opening so that the mercury doesn't run out when you tip it over, and which will, of course, suck bubbles back up through it. And uh, you don't want bubbles in here, because I wanted to have a near-perfect vacuum above the mercury. That way we're able to accurately measure the air pressure, because the pressure here is forcing the mercury up, and however high that goes is how high the pressure is. If I have air up in here, then it'll make this go lower. But, I just got done measuring it. See, if I measure from the top of the mercury in the bottle to the top of the mercury here, you'll find that I got just over two feet. So that's 24, 25 and a half inches. So here's my little watch-based barometer, which I know is fairly accurate. And this says 25.10 inches of mercury. Well, I just measured about 25 and a half, which means this thing is accurate. Okay, seems to be well attached in the truck. See the level of mercury there? Check it again, we're about 25 and a quarter or so inches. Let's go ahead and uh, let's put the mark right on there. Whatever the level of mercury is. Yep, there we go. I got it secured pretty well, I think. Let's go ahead and drive it down. Maybe a couple hundred feet lower elevation and see if it changes. Should go up, right? Here we are, we've come down out of the mountain. We've gone down about 500 feet in elevation, I believe. This thing has definitely moved. You can see, there's our mark. There's the level of mercury. It's gone up around half an inch. Let me look at the uh, watch base barometer, and as you can see, it's gone up as well. How about that? We are back up on the hill. As you can see, the level of the mercury is just about to the original mark. It's a little lower, but considering how much we shook it around, I'd expect that. Uh, this one is actually a little lower as well, so it's possible the weather has changed in the hour or so since we've last checked it. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set this thing up somewhere where I can read it, probably in the shade because it doesn't seem to like the heat. And uh, when that mercury drops, we'll know that a storm's coming, and when it goes up, it could be good weather. I mean, that was the original use as a barometer, as a weather-telling sort of instrument. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.